Good evening, or good morning. Uh, it's been a while since I've done a live stream. Currently you know, 11 past 8 here in the evening. Double day, I've got more testing to do, and I'll talk about that in just a moment. The thumbs are back as part of this testing. You can see the ride-ons rolling down. Hope everybody is well. Um, this ride will be a Llama Lab test once I'm warmed up. A minimum of 45 minutes that I'll be hanging around for. We'll maybe go through for the hour. Uh, I think the tour starts the live coverage of stage nine. Is it stage nine or stage 10? Stage nine. And the tour starts very shortly. Let's go. Three power meters, two which I can tell you about. <laughs> so it's all good. All right, let me load up the chat. I have a coffee here. Garmin Rally XC, no, Tim, but they will be coming soon because of my new shoes. I have the new S-Works shoes. Von also has a pair, I had to buy Von a pair as well. And those S-Works shoes, I've got a story to tell about those. 500, and, it's, it's a coffee, I'm. No, it's not the Speedplay Wahoo either. They're over there. Um, yeah, those shoes, super light. Most comfortable shoes I've ever worn, except for one problem that I had with them that I did resolve. I'll go into it in the video. Okay, so the title of today's video that I had to type something in for this live stream. Are my Bluetooth sensor pairing issues resolved with Zwift? Long story short, <clears throat> I was having no end of problems trying to get heart rate paired in game. Ticker X, uh, Polar H10, you name it, I've tried it all. I'd go to the pairing screen. It would come up with uh, connected, not connected, and zero um, BPM. I'd click pair again, Zwift would crash. If you saw my early Sunday live stream where I was meant to be ride leading, that was the pinnacle of failure. I didn't have a stream, I don't think I've streamed since then because of that exact reason. Zwift locks up, completely locks up on this system. Did I say long story short? I meant long story long. There's a support ticket in with Zwift. I've navigated my way through first level, second level. I have I have a person, I have a person at Zwift looking into this. Hi, Ali Mac, g'day mate. So have a one-on-one -on -one because I went nuclear on this. It, it got to me. My main goal here is for, and it's not just me having this problem as well. I know a lot of other people and pairing sensors on Zwift. It's, just, it's difficult. It really is. So I thought, let's go. Let's cycling. I'm going really well, mate. Thanks for asking. I expressed my minor disappointment that day. <laughs> Someone was watching the streams that I've deleted. You saw some true Aussie come out there. Anyway, long story short, I'm, I'm, I'm working through the issue with Zwift on this machine. And I thought yesterday, why don't I use the Brains Trust over in the Zwift PC Master Race group, that's what they call themselves, over on Facebook. There's some really, really switched on people there who know PCs inside out. I thought I knew PCs inside, well, I know how to build them and I know how, I've got my, technically I'm not too bad, but there's people out there who are a lot better. Paul, it's coming. The answer's coming, mate, and I'm pretty happy. That's why I'm confident to live stream. So, rather than just put up a, this doesn't work, rah, rah, rah. I'll get to my Llama Lab test soon after I've told the story and I've warmed up and I've finished my coffee. Rather than just, this doesn't work, angry emoji hit slam. I thought, you know what? I'll outline what the issue I'm having is what my goals are, and the goal was ultimately to fix my problem, but for Zwift to then acknowledge they need to build a more robust and resilient subsystem for the pairing process that would crash itself rather than the entire program. I mean, ideally that would be better for, yeah, the two is on late night, so I'm coughing. I wanna see the, the process of pairing sensors in Zwift be a lot better. Crash the subsystem rather than the entire system itself. Maybe if you've got a, a set set of sensors, maybe click a little lock button and say, that's what I'll always be using from now on. Don't even search. They're my sensors, click, click, click. Hold onto those. 
And next time I start Zwift, that's what I'll be using. That'd be really handy for here, actually. I've got so many things floating around. So I've typed out this whole, here's the issue. Here's what my goal is in trying to resolve this. Here's how to replicate the issue. Here's what I've done to try and resolve the issue. Here's what everyone can, if you can contribute, try this, try this, try this. Tons of responses. One from Dave, the, who runs the group, pointed around the C++ redistributables, which is a set of libraries that get installed, shared libraries, I guess, that programs can use if they don't deliver them themselves in the installation process. Long story short, side story, sub story, the Zwift launcher once used to deliver those or didn't and now does. They're doing something there with delivering these redistributables. So Zwift relies on these files and these libraries to work. Dave posted up with, hey, have you tried installing the latest, uh, I'll do an entire video on this if it continues to be as good as what it is. So don't worry about the details for now, I'm just telling the story. Dave says, uh, have you tried reinstalling the C++ redistributables, which are 2015 to 2019. Now these redistributables, I think that's the right word for them. There's like 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Usually with PCs and computers, you install the latest and you get backwards compatible compatibility. <laughs> God, I'm toast already. Not with these, you've got to install the old ones too. So you've got multiple versions of these C++ redistributables. If you go to your Add remove programs in Windows now, you'll see a ton of them there. Programs will install their own. I think Windows comes with about five or six versions installed. I thought, okay, I might try that. That's a good one, but I won't go there just yet. But I think it was Ian come along and said, here's what I've done, and here's what worked for me with a similar issue. And took the time to outline everything step by step. I love a good step by step. I also love a good change log to follow. So I thought I'll give that a shot. Nah, I thought I'd done everything. I'd done a full Zwift reinstall, check Bluetooth drivers. I've checked the power settings on those so it doesn't go to sleep, you name it. I've done quite a lot of stuff. So the solution, how long are we into the stream? <laughs> Seven minutes, eight minutes. <laughs> Is to, well, first of all, this could affect everything else on the machine. But my primary goal for this machine is Zwift first. Uh, any video production and things I do on this machine separate, second, that can be fixed. The verb edit and things, if I need to do overlays, you know, streaming, and then whatever else. This is primarily my Zwift machine, so that's the most important thing. So if it ruins everything else, that's okay for now. Let's get Zwift rock solid. You go to the add remove programs, remove all the C++ redistributables from 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, all of them, all of them. Then you reboot. That's probably broken a few things. The operating system will still be okay. You go to Microsoft, pull down the latest redistributable patch, which includes 2017 through 2019. When I do a video on this, I'll put links in the video description. You install that pack of libraries. You do a fresh install of Zwift. Voila. You should have seen the difference that made. Not only for Zwift not crashing, but under the Bluetooth power meter section, I've got right here in this room, 10, 15 power meters that Zwift should be able to discover and pair to. Uh, previously, my previous install that was troublesome with the old libraries and whatever was mixed up, could only see about three or four. Once I did this refresh and only installed these uh, new pack of redistributables and killed all the others, fresh installer Zwift, Christmas tree. It listed everything. All the power meters. I can't even show you the screen because there's unreleased power meters that are now coming up on the list that I have floating around, which is brilliant, which makes me very happy. Now onto trying to replicate the heart rate's crashing issue, which we saw on live stream. It will still connect, it'll find the ticker or the whatever. It'll say disconnected and then reconnect, zero BPM, 
bang, and then start reading. It finds it again and rediscovers it. It's a world of difference. I still think we need to re redo their subsystem for pairing systems and pairing sensors and locking them in and making that a lot easier. But that was all thanks to the guys over in the uh, PC Master Race group over on Facebook. So this morning, that was last night. I've sent them an update with, yeah, looks good, but wait till the morning when I want to do my workout. None of this just testing workout, no? Because that's when I get really mad. If I want to do my workout, it doesn't work. Perfect again this morning. And just now. That's why I have the uh, graph along the bottom there. Now this is not sensor, um, not the data coming from the sensor. There's going to be dropouts and things with AMP Plus and Bluetooth. And there's going to be all the standard stuff until that's resolved. But this was just pairing. Game changer. So far. I'll give it more than 24 hours before I spin up a video saying, hey, check this out. If you're having trouble, do this. It's also a risky solve. If someone's got a business machine or a system they do a lot more on than just Swift, removing all those redistributables might kill off and Peppa Pig goes to the circus.exe or something like that. So, yeah, they're designed to coexist, exactly. Noel, that's why it's so hard to find these specific issues because we don't have enough low-level detail on exactly what's happening what's working so as we were going through my logs they had a look at my system logs they did a lot of work digging around i can see a lot from their end too which was great but who would have thought you know nuking those again remember back in the windows 95 days sometimes going to safe mode and then booting up into normal mode it would do something something good usually anyhow that's where i'm at with this so if you're having trouble, um, the Zwift PC Master Race Group over on Facebook, really handy for all things PC. And that was an answer supply within, that was within a few hours, I think I got that to try out. Is it the silver bullet? I don't know, but I'll tell you what, I was gonna put a bullet through the machine if it wasn't fixed. So frustrating. And my concern, and why I've raised it with Zwift Direct as a support ticket, I'm taking the time to submit logs and things is because it's nothing that I'm doing and I guess everybody watching if you're just being a standard user clicking the user buttons you're you're given and things crash out that's not fun if I was tweaking things and playing around with the back end and deleting resource files so thumbs don't fall all the fun stuff sure things might crash but yeah Anyhow, uh, Michael, probably because they can't test everything. I don't look, I don't have access. I don't have a seat at that table. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, for six years, my hand has been up. I have access to all, all the new toys. And I, I am genuinely interested in how they work, making them work and making sure everyone has as much fun as I do when they work. Paul, let me know. Just give me a start run. Again, I have to put a disclaimer on the video. I have enough subs now that if I give out the wrong advice, I'll probably be sued. Christ, I put a little chevron on a t-shirt and a company wants to sue me. Not Wahoo. It wasn't Wahoo. <laughs> They're a good company. Ah, yes. The, the ride-on thumb is back because I had to do a full reinstall and I wanted everything to be straight down the line. Vanilla. Also brings up another conversation around exactly what Zwift log on the machine. If it was the redistributables that were causing the problem, shouldn't they be logging the library versions that are being called? Is that a possibility? Because they could have nailed that straight away. If that is the solution, or maybe a pathway to making it working a little better. Don't get me started on the Kicker Direct Connect. Don't get me started. Anyhow, that's my story. As you can see, the data looks pretty good. My heart rate's about where it should be. Power isn't. Not on one of these power meters anyway. That's for another day. 
Uh, if you see my Instagram in the last couple of days, I've been testing three sets of power meters. Really, really good results. Results that I'd expect. Single speed that I'm on at the moment. Super clean chain, straight drive chain. I'm losing only a few watts in ERG. Uh, as to be expected, I guess just a few watts. It should never be the other way around. Um, but I've been putting up the happy stories there. If I had reposted day three, it would have been a sad story. I switched some power meters around. Not as happy. Not as happy. Uh, look, Michael, I've, uh, I've sat down and reviewed my list of 100 things I'd like to see fixed. I've trimmed it back. <laughs> I think I will do the video on, it's 100 things, just low hanging fruit. Um, I'll give you an example of what's on my list of 100 things I'd love to see fixed on Zwift. It's not a whinge video. It's a, ah, oh yeah, why doesn't it do that? Kind of thing. And if I can rip through them in say 10 minutes. Uh, something as simple as, just got a few written down here. Obviously there's no gradient shown in the companion app. Um, when I don't have a heart rate monitor paired, in workout mode it says zero BPM, but in the companion app it says dash dash BPM. They should both say dash dash zero. Shouldn't show, little little tiny things like that that'll be like, oh they fixed that bug. I don't care. That should that's the way it always should have been. Uh, and in free ride mode, if there's no heart rate in free ride mode, it's dash dash. Um, the action bar down the bottom disappears when you actually action something. So if you turn erg mode on or off, you don't know whether you've turned erg on or off because the action bar disappears. There's a hilarious one on the action bar when you're in slope mode. There's two up arrows and two down arrows. They're not labeled. Pace spots in all worlds. Why can't we hide HUD in workout mode? All the data's on the, uh, the companion app. Of all the modes, workout mode's the mode you should be able to hide the HUD for. Um, Cobble sounds. See, all these are head slapping. Why the cobble sounds? We all know the cobble sounds are too loud. Little tiny things, little tiny things like that. But I have a list of 100 things. <laughs> three second power averaging in workout mode. If you click on, yes, I want three second power averaging like I do here in free ride, that doesn't apply to workout mode. Um, the reasoning behind that quote possibly would have been, erg would have been smoothed anyway from the trainer. Some trainers it's not, and it will update four times per second. So you go from once a second to four. I've got lots, I've got lots. I think it could be a fun video. It's not a whinge video, it's one of these things where people be like, oh, that, yeah, that, that should be fixed. Austria, welcome along. Hey, I think I have subscription or subscriber-only chat on, on um, YouTube. Because why not? Hopefully everybody is a subscriber. Feel free to test that out if that doesn't work. If you're not a subscriber and try and chat, say good day. Let me know who's going to win the stage tonight for the tour. We're not doing Titans Grove. Let's go somewhere else. <laughs> De Ben's house, sir. You're a software dev who has to maintain the stall is my word. I think I had one or two jobs where I had to manage uh, is it MSI packages back in the day. Subtest, there we go. Look, onto some tour talk before I get stuck into my Llama Lab test. I thought Cav was done, I thought Cav was washed up. Not the negative in a negative way, like people have was it about eight years or so of being a pro tour at world level unless you're exceptional. We're even seeing Sargon on the bit of a downward slope. Or we're seeing other people come along and be better and leapfrog. I thought Cav is done. I thought Cav was toast. Uh you saw his emotions, was it last year? 
at one of the tours or one of the races where he thought it was over for him. For him to win one race, I'm like, oh, okay, not bad. That's a great story. The second, prove us wrong, Cav. You've proven us all wrong. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Good to see. What a story, though. What a story. I really hope, here's my fairy tale ending. I hope Cav, I don't care if he gets the, um, the Merck's record. I mean, that legend will never be surpassed anyway. It's always, it's ingrained, the Merck's legend. Maybe, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying. It'll always be there. But if he takes green and then hangs the bike up as the legend, job done. Job done. That would be just brilliant. I'd love that. Write another book. Do the media rounds. That would be sweet. And I say that because I think we've seen Cav do the slow decline already. Oh, I don't want to see him do that path again. Very suspicious. Uh, yeah, pro racing. <laughs> racing as a whole, we, we just never know. That's the true answer that we just don't know. But it's a great story though. He's a likable character sometimes. <laughs> Oh, well, you. Cav's first stage win was when you were eight. Damn. See, to me, Cav's just a boy. I'm 43 very shortly, so. Ah, it's good stuff. It's good for. The story is good for cycling, too. We need stories like that. I like it. That's good. We'll see, though. We'll see. As an Aussie, it was bad to see Caleb out so easy, but. The Pog is something else. Oh, mate, I feel older than 43, trust me. Well, technically I'm not 43 yet. All right, let's call this the warm-up before I zero these power meters and get stuck into the easier stuff. So part of my workouts lately, if you've seen my Strava, has been my five by five blocks. I used those back in the day a lot. They got me prepared for a lot of TTs and they're just structured that I know, structured that I can do it automatically and structured workouts that build. I started in July last year doing them and that fitness chart went up and up and up and up and up and then we took Max to daycare and that fitness went down, 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 down. But we haven't been sick for a while from daycare bugs, so back into it. Started off at 250, 260, 270, 280. And then a story I won't go too far into. I had a company email me, direct first interaction with the company, calling me names, calling me, this is from a company, from a director, calling me unprofessional saying that they thought that I was more professional than what I was over a comment on uh, untested and untried power meters, which was my recommendation. My professional recommendation wouldn't be to go anywhere near an untested power meter with money. Oh, that sent someone off. Again, I won't go too deep into it yet. The result being there is, I was fucking angry at that. Excuse me. I was really angry. That's everything that we're going into wasn't what I stand for. I live and breathe this shit because I actually enjoy it. My workouts in the mornings are mine. <coughs> My frustrations are mine. And I try and turn those into something positive by like collecting data, feeding it to companies, having them make better products, so we don't buy a piece of shit power meters on the market. Which, as you know, if you follow the channel, there's quite a lot of them. And in my experience, most of them are from Kickstarter. <laughs> Ray, welcome along. <laughs> Ray might be on the receiving end of a few of my back channel uh, outlets. Ray, I appreciate that. Thanks, mate. I don't know what time of the day Ray gets my angry messages. Can you believe this? 
God damn. <laughs> so, short story short. <laughs> uh, that's what friends are for. Um, that energy has been put into my, my intervals, which are now at 300. And that data goes back to another power meter company. So they can review that data and make a better product. So here I have one company doing a bit of this when they should be on the tools making a better product, revving me up. I've spun that around with the biggest F you that I can think of. I've upped my game, I've collected the data. It goes back to not just one, there's a couple of companies involved here that I've, I'm testing a few meters. We do, this is it's my job. And I love what I do. So I'd like to thank them for that email. I haven't heard back. Just, it's not how to do it. Anyhow, Ray, you're in the chat. What's new, mate? <laughs> How's things? Race across America, Lee, no. Enduro is not really my thing. Stephen Lane, though, on the other hand, he's the one to follow. IQ squared, I'm uh, not sure. It was over a year ago they sent those pedals out. Uh, I contacted them a few months back saying, do you have any updates? Uh, nothing. So they were a part of my clip-in video the other day because they are look KO compatible. I'd filmed it, I'd put the pedal on and everything, but I thought it'd just trigger too many people who were backers. And no one's got the pedals anyway. Good job, right? New trainer and power meter testing. Good, good. So my five by five efforts are again, building my own base, but they make the Llama lab test a lot easier. So I'm happy with that. Just as long as we don't get sick from little Maxi again. All right, it's time to get stuck into Llama lab test. Speed play power link, that should be soon. Ian, the five by five is just such a simple, basic workout. It is a 10 minute warm up, and it's just simply a block of five minutes with, my workout has five minutes and five minutes on, five minutes off, five minutes on, five minutes off. The off is variable, you just swipe and, or hit tab once the heart rate comes down, or if you need more recovery. Uh, back in my race days, I used to use, it was either FTP or above FTP for those five. Um, at the moment, it's just a bit below. My FTP test the other day was 319, which is higher than I thought. So I'm doing my five by fives at 300 at the moment, which doesn't burn me too hard. And if I need to dig a little further, I just go back and read my inbox. Oh, sorry, my scent items. <laughs> I get enough motivation from that. Um, but it's just the structure of the five by five. It's the tolerance of the pain in the last two. It's just knowing that five minutes is only five minutes. Actually, your five minute interval is always less than five because by the time you look up at the screen, it's four minutes 55. Anyone can ride for that. Zwift could do anything better to incentivize people to ride more often. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of things Zwift could be doing for that. Um, what I'd like to see is Zwift to have a, an overall fitness tracker or chart, like uh, what Trainer Road implemented a few, was it a few years ago now, to track your overall fitness. There's no way in Zwift to track your FTP progress. You just get one number, that's it. And if it goes up or down, you don't see your history throughout 12 months. Historical data is really, really important. And that's why I knew my five by fives work so well for me. So I went back and what I'm doing right now is exactly what I did last year. And the graph just went like that with hardly any effort. Just get on every morning, do my workout, watch it go like that. But I got that information from the trainer road, historical data and also the Strava stuff. But Strava's pretty crappy because you've got to have a heart rate monitor on. Um, so I'd like to see Zwift do a holistic, you're an athlete, outside, inside, upload it to their website, but it's a whole, it's a different business. 
They could just buy today's plan or something like that, couldn't they? Or training picks. I mean, Swift is big enough. Just buy training picks. Drive, buy today's plan. Whatever. Job done. Warranty. Um, M. Brown. Don't know. It really depends who you talk to. If you're out of warranty. Vibrations, that's a bad one though. You shouldn't have two in a row. Oh, the wobbly wheel shadow bug is hilarious. Okay, on my list of 100 things for Zwift to fix. Isn't the shadow bug exactly, because I'll probably fix that soon, but it's the ability for them to fix things quicker. That shadow bug's been there for two or three weeks now. If I was live streaming this, trying to showcase Zwift, and my bike frame is spinning around, that's a joke. How do, you, how do the investors... Let's just speculate a bit. How do an investor look at this and go, okay, you're a billion dollar company, but your fucking bike frame's spinning around backwards and your wheels are wobbly. What? Just the little things. I know they're across platforms, they're across multiple platforms, but at least for the PC stuff. Yeah, fitness tracker. So that would also incentivize people to achieve more, ride more. You know, what's your pizza slices this week? Zwift is very single ride focused. I don't know of any multiple ride stuff, only in game. Anyway. I also think of releasing the Llama Lab to public too. Though it's easy to replicate. I was thinking of just putting it out there. Here's the workout, download it. Here's the exact watts. It'll be absolute watts too. It's not gonna be a percentage of your FTP. It's gonna be 200, 250 into a sprint. And then your overs and unders, it's gonna to stick to those watts because they're the zones that I think are important to know about. Um, <clears throat> so during this, it's a pretty, pretty quiet time for everything at the moment. So I might put that one out there. It's a good workout. Speaking of it being a good workout, let's get it done. E for workout. The reason why E is workout is E for erg. Um, okay, yes, sorry, five by fives, five by fives right here. That's it, and I've got to set my FTP to something weird to get the right zone. 341 for the Llama Lab test though. 200, 250, overs and unders. Hit workout, and now I don't know what direction I'm going. Where do we go? Do we go to the jungle, baby? Which way is it going to... We'll go to the jungle. Hey! It's going to send me up Elta Zwift, is it? Oh no, I've got bad memories of going up Elta Zwift and crashing out. <laughs> All right. So typically we'll have a 10 minute free ride here is when I start. One minute free ride is the next interval where I would um, stop and calibrate everything or zero everything. Uh, a good workout I did up Elta Zwift the other morning was hard efforts on every second segment. So you go from corner to corner, like really putting the gas down. And that broke up that climb into a, a one hour or 56 minute interval session. I love that. It wasn't erg mode. It was dynamic in the way that obviously the gradient changes. That was really good. Yeah, the jungle sucks. It's really slow, but this is just a, a lab test anyway. Uh, ZAM, yes, every now and then. I believe ZAM are working on an updated version. All right, what I'm doing now, Gonna unclip. Oh, crack. That's how you clip in. That, those pedals aren't going anywhere. Six and 12. Two power minis to zero. And the kick air five will be auto caled. Cal range. <clears throat> Much easier now with the shortcuts on the Garmin devices to get to calibrate. What am I testing? Uh, Kicker 5 is one. The Rival Axis Quark is another. And the other is Undisclosed. Done. Good, let's go. Snap. Snap, snap, snap.
So with those 5x5, five five, the fitness has come right up really quickly. One of my last intervals the other day, I thought, oh, let's just go, I'm angry now. So I did 3.30 for 5 at the end of that session. That was pretty good. But what I find, if I start ramping up those to, say, 3.10, 3.20, 3.50, 5x5s five at 3.50, I could probably suffer through them. But it's not fun. You burn out way too fast. So hopefully now I'm, I've spent a month under 300s. I think I'll sit at 300 for those sessions for the rest of this month. Come August, I think there's some racing on Zwift. Just a, another series. Of, there's got to be another series or another tour of Watopia or something coming up. So we'll see if that fitness can be put to good use for that. And yeah, we'll just see where we get back to. Um, years ago, a few of those sessions would have been at 400, but I'm not that young anymore. <laughs> All right, straight chain line. This is on my one by. So I'm effectively in the small ring anyway. It's a 40 tooth on the front. Um, 12 gears on the back. I don't even know which one to choose. That's one where the chain does this, not this or this. So we should be good to go. Ah, oh, we have Berg. All right, we've zeroed everything. It's 36 minutes. I should be finished by now. Thanks for the banter, everyone. Tab, tab, 200. Let's go. Bangarang. You think we'll get through the jungle? We'll do one lap of the jungle in 20 minutes on the road bike so it's slower. We'll see. We shall see. Oh, some numbers are good. That makes me happy. But not all numbers are good, so. See how the wash up goes. So Uncatil at 4.2. Pace bot. Wow, actually some riders with that pace bot. Good stuff. Veronica needs the Mert kit for sure. You'll probably see why I disable the thumbs now. If only we could disable the thumb sound. That would be handy. Oh, I've got my balance issue sorted out. Good. I was a bit right side wonky today. Which technically doesn't matter if your left right balances a bit out with a dual sided meter and also a smart trainer. But if one meter is a single sided meter, there'll be problems. Uh, Paul, the latest firmware is Bluetooth FTMS control, which isn't anything special. It should be more robust and more resilient for pairing with things. I hope that's gone right so far. Okay, MW, this workout is the Llama Low Test. Uh, Zwiftcoach.com. I may have it up, a version of this, over on Zwiftcoach.com. If my little itty bitty Apache server is still up and running. It'll be down below, but it's not the final version. I think I was testing a version that broke out into a max sprint. Didn't work too well. For the max sprint test, which is at the end of the next 10 minute block, I drop that into free ride mode. And if I'm going down a hill, I turn around and sprint up the hill. Hey, Zwift Coach is still working. Good stuff. Alpaca serve, he's still running. Excellent. Hey, there we go. Better support for other platforms like GT Bike V. Yep, 5B.
with the worker, it's pretty boring. <laughs> Not much to it. It serves as a good base to have a look at where things might be going wrong too. I think Ray does 30 by 30 30s, 30 on, 30 off. And there's enough of those to look at heat drift and how things match up with first and last. I think that's Ray's bread and butter. Mine is the little bit lower at the 10 minute mark. And then my overzone is only 20 second. But they both sort of get us to the same answer of, you know, is there anything more we need to look into? Uh, smart trainer lifespan? Really depends. It really depends. I know Tim Searle's on an original kicker one with the original belt. That's unheard of. But still working for him. Uh, it really depends. You should at least get a few years of constant use. Uh, it even it's important to keep them in the right environment if they're kept out in the open. They are computers. They have circuit boards. So if they're in humidity or condensation, and they do get super, super, super hot. The energy has to go somewhere. That's usually into heat in the flywheels. Dimitar, FTVS can be supported on the web. Hello. Now, there was a web control for FTMS, wasn't there? I think Kinomap had something like that. This was years ago. I do like your thinking. Uh, MW, this workout, if you go to what's on Zwift.com, I think they had some really good tutorials or instructions there on how to get these working. Off the top of my head at the moment, I think you dump it into your documents, Zwift, user ID, workouts folder, or something like that. But what's on Zwift.com, I think has most of my workouts hosted there as well. Uh, Paul, I don't believe there's any configuration changes you can make for the power up button on the kicker bike. And that's one of my list things in my list of 100 things I'd like to see Zwift. Just enhance a little bit and this is the customization of smart bikes. I don't recall any configuration at all other than what they program in by default. The only option there would be to have the button disabled with Wahoo in their app. If they don't do that, maybe submit a support request. So you can lock out the auxiliary functions. I know steering can be annoying if you don't want steering. And it would be the same if you do it a U-turn, if you were chasing a rat badge. Let's just say you're on pretzel, four horsemen, mega pretzel, and you accidentally hit a U-turn and reset your, uh, your route. That would be catastrophic. Original flux, say it ain't so. I still have the Flux 2.1 here in a box. I haven't unboxed it, that's why it's still in the box. Saving it for a rainy day, of which there are many at the moment here. We're in the middle of winter. All right, two minutes and things get a little harder. But I must say the Bluetooth stuff is holding on strong. There's 45 minutes done. The Bluetooth logging in the Zwift logs is very light on too. So 
more logging for Ant Plus. Chrome has Ant Plus support on the web. Ho ho! All right, so what that means is services such as Full Gaz, maybe Sufferfest, Trainer Road. If you've got Ant Plus and Bluetooth control within a web browser, and let's say it all works as it should, then you should be able to deliver a, a service, maybe not the full service, but your service offering via a web browser. And if it meets all the standards, then it'll work on everything. In a perfect world, but we know not everything is perfect. All right. Things are looking not bad. Not bad. There's no auto write ons. If they do give you a write on and then on your rider list, you'll get a little thumb next to their name and you can click on that or cup screen that. But there's no auto write on back. If you want to be tricky, you can get an auto clicker for Android. I'm not sure I've looked for iOS. I know Android has one. And up we go to 250. Give an auto clicker on. You need to center it on the screen, have it click every 10 seconds. And as you're riding around to Zwift, you can give thumbs on to everybody. <clears throat> uh, no news on the Commander as yet. I was using it on the Stages bike. It was working well. I was hoping to get some auxiliary buttons so I could use it while I was on the, uh, out on the levers, on the brake hoods. That would be very handy. I'm sure Uncle Keith is across it though. Ah, uh, no, it doesn't work in events, no. Free ride. But if you want to get the uh, bigger than Yenzi ride on thing, go and ride with the pace partners. Coco is a thumb fest. Hey, Rich, it can't be too cold in Stafford, UK. You guys are in summer. Or oh, was summer last week? <laughs> Uncle Keith is the geek's geek. The content he does is absolutely brilliant. It doesn't have the mass reach though, or the mass appeal, because of the depth that it goes to. There's always a fine balance there, but we love it. <coughs> He's uh, one of the reasons why my Shimano left right report had a lot more weight to it than just me saying, hey, check out all this data. Here's what I think's going on. Keith came in and said, yeah, I can explain this. And he did. And the best part about it is, I don't think I was wrong. <laughs> <I'm confused. laughs> Okay, I'm sweating a bit more now. And you see that heart rate graph just slowly pinch up. I'm out of coffee. Two of live stream should start soon. Brunei, welcome along. What's the temperature there today, Mark? It's actually a balmy six degrees Celsius here at the moment. Not too bad at all. 21.3 here though in the Llama Lab. Numbers, 
As I expected, actually. As I expected. And like Ray, I'm, I'm warming to the, the single-sided meter. Oh, wonky wheels. Well, single-sided meters, when they're, when they're accurate, they're, they're great for what they do, for exactly what they do. I think Stages nailed it. What's, Stages has probably been on the market for nine, eight or nine years now. I think they were the pioneers, weren't they? The single-sided stick on gauges. Thumbs up, always welcome, thank you. Subscribers too. I think only subscribers can chat tonight. I'm evil like that. YouTube enabled subscriber only chat. I think it's a nice way to incentivize people too. If you wanna get involved and have a chat, just uh, that way you can support the channel too. Right, bang on, mate. The benefit of an inaccurate dual-sided meter is if only one side is inaccurate, you only get half the error. Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> but the rival axis is what I've got on the, the left side. Only the single speed version. But there's more to it than me being impressed with it. There's a story to tell, like most power meters, there's a story to tell. And there's a reason why I don't have a review out within 48 hours. Getting from A to B, B being the destination, being happy, wasn't a straight line. No power meter, no error. Fergus, <laughs> you're on the money. <laughs> I like it. No seasons near the equator. Ah, oh. dry season, wet season, that's it. <laughs> Haven't stopped sweating since you got off the plane. <laughs> Sloth coming up. Sloth just smacked that guy in the head. <sighs> Igor, uh, the rival build looks great. We're missing one single part, just the one part. We have the stem today. We have the SRAM bleed kit. What else did we order? Ah, uh, there was something else, but we can't put the bottom bracket in just yet. It's looking good though. And it's not even my bike. <laughs> Coming soon though, mate. Stay tuned. Heart rate is still a good metric. Though you need to respect what it is. It's just a response to what you're doing. It's not the actual effort you're doing. And that response can change from day to day with the same effort. <clears throat> Much easier getting through these now that I've been doing my five by fives of a morning. <clears throat> Welcome along, Gavin. We are live. The jibber jabber is live. Two minutes max sprint. And we should be going up the hill then. You're right. Uh, Peter, the, the little llama will show up on YouTube only. Uh, and YouTube comments <coughs> on videos. 
it won't show up here on the restream uh, group chat which is both YouTube and Twitch yep four eyes left hand side and there's a reason why four eyes should work well they invented ant so if any system is going to work very well with ant it should be four eyes Who then sold it to Garmin? Who called it something? And then I think Ant Plus and Ant is owned by Garmin Canada now. That entity, I think. <laughs> real Watts. The reality of real Watts. Okay, 40 seconds. Max sprint. Ugh. Not looking forward to this. I need some gradient, so I'll do a U-turn here. So I'll be sprinting on the dirt against the plus two. Can I U-turn? I can. All right. Now on the one by, it's hard to pick a sprint gear, so I can't really load it up. All right. I think I'm in the 12. Still not really enough. Okay, breaks from Ergen to Sim now. Resistance. Crikey. If you don't train sprints, you can't sprint. And that's me not sprinting well. 1263 on the kicker. Twelve oh four on the rival. That's not bad. I don't expect the rival to grab those peaks. Thirteen twenty two. Okay, it's better than I thought. Now we have to recover because we've got the overs and unders coming up. They hurt the worst. The worst. The most. English isn't my first language. <laughs> not at this heart rate. Silence is. <sighs> Does anybody watch the documentary called The Art of Flight about snowboarding and Travis Rice? Anybody? You're showing your age if you are. I think it was 2011, 10 years ago. The soundtrack to that will get you riding very good erg intervals. The Art of Flight, look at that, it's a brilliant movie. Excellent, you know it, Peter? Yep. Excellent, excellent people know it, great. Such a, like that movie was so well shot. It was before everybody got cameras and 4K cameras. I uh, haven't done three peaks. So everybody who's finished three peaks is faster than me. Everybody. But the Art of Flight, yeah, just the intro soundtrack. Put that on and turn it right up. So good. I think Travis Rice and crew had some more videos after that, but that was just, I mean, there's been Warren Miller stuff around for years and years, and they've been great. But Art of Flight just came out of, I think I just found the, Download one day. So good, so good. Uh, sorry, uh, Ingmar, what to do? Always use Garmin with my Vector 3s and my Scuto as a controllable trainer. Now I can't pair them at the same time. Is that normal? No. You should be able to pair your Scuto as the controllable and your Vector 3s as the power source. Absolutely, you should be able to do that. Um, why is it not able to do that? Is it saying, is there a Bluetooth connection limitation or is it just not showing up? I have solutions for both. <laughs> Max on the back. I did have a thought this year going up and doing Tour of Bright because was Tour of Bright even on? I don't think it was on. I think it was COVID cancelled. 
uh, doing the Tour of Right route with Max in the back in the trailer. Every stage would take all day, including the time trial, but we didn't get up there though. Okay, into my overs and unders. These are just short. A straight chain line again. Everything's good to go. Okay, a few things for the Bluetooth not showing up. Make sure nothing else is paired to it. It's only a single connection Bluetooth trainer. Failing that, jump on the Zwift PC Master Race group on Facebook and have a look at uh, the recent thread about C++ redistributables. That is a game changer. Fixed my problem last night, so far. And now everything shows up in this room. It lights up like a Christmas tree. It's great. How it should be. Alrighty. 350. This shouldn't be bad. Watch the heart rate lag there. Slowly come up. If you have Bluetooth on your mobile phone too, Ingmar, turn that off just as a test when you're trying to pair. Sometimes if you have an app in the background grabbing that trainer connection. I've had other trainer apps hold on to trainer connections over Bluetooth, which means things like Zwift or Trainer Road or Sufferfest can't see the trainer when you're trying to pair. Two down. And that's red for a reason. They heard a bit more. Okay. Not a four minute sprint, no. <laughs> it was. It's about a four second sprint. All right, 450. Pretty quick resistance changes there. Trying to keep balanced, so the single side of meter is happy too. That looks pretty good actually. Awesome. One more. <laughs> See the heart rate creeping up? <sighs> I can feel it. Last one. I've got my balance on screen, so I'm looking down. Doesn't matter testing a jewel, but since I've got a single side of meter on, I make sure it's balanced. I get indication of the single side of meter. 452 on the single side. Not bad. Not bad. Ben O'Connor in the tour. How good is that kid? So happy for him. If Ray's still in the chat, uh, when Ray and I both sat down with Dimension Data at the Tour, de, tour, tour Down Under the year before last, we sat down with the, uh, the Die Data data guy who showed us how they track riders, track the trends, forecast their fitness, their races, how they collect all the information, the apps they use. He took us through the whole lot. I'm pretty sure Ray did a post on it. And one of the riders he pointed out was Ben O'Connor. Not for any reason, just that, oh, so he's a rider. Obviously he stood out on the top of the list for some reason. He didn't tell why. He was like, okay, so Ben's doing this, this, this. So the way they watch these riders come up and people have never heard of Ben O'Connor before. You're like, oh, is that his first season in Europe? I think he's been there for five years. But these pro teams know, they look at the data, again, the historical data, as I was talking about Zwift, how to incentivize people to ride more and track yourself more. I mean, we're not pro tour riders, but there's so much information that can be gathered, observed, used from having your historical logs. And Ben O'Connor is one of them. So when Ray and I sat down, it was the guy was just talking about Ben and his plans and everything. Now he didn't stay with that team. Obviously there's contractual reasons and sponsors and everything that team went through. 
But then AG2R picked him up for a, it was a one year contract. Uh, Com bypass, let's go back down into the, uh, the desert. One year contract, indeed, super cool. So there we go, here we go. All oh, right, that was the one you lost, damn it. Okay, I'm not doing the 4.30, I don't need to test the trainer, we know the, we know the kicker works. So there's the Lama Lab test. That yellow bit there is me trying to do my, my warm up, and then there's me talking too much again. There's the zero offset to the two power meters and into the work there. Data looks pretty clean. Heart rate looks all right. Bit of a drop there though. That's probably 67 down to 63. And if you notice my heart rate rises up, it rises before I do the sprint. It always does that. It's in anticipation for I know what's coming. Because I've done so many of these, I, my body's like, you know what's coming. And you get a bit nervous. Especially during a live stream. I've got to put out at least a thousand watts. <laughs> so, but yeah, it's really interesting to have a look at that. Peak power or peak uh, heart rate is a few seconds after when I'm not even pedaling. And here's the heart rate lag with the step stuff there. So interesting stuff. Another thing on my list of 100 things that a Zwift should do. Uh, why is there no colors in the power distribution? There's colors for the heart rate distribution. There's no reason why that couldn't be colored here with what zones I'm in. Just a thought. Thing is, it's always been like that. Ever since John Mayfield's very first version of JMX Trainer, which was Zwift 10 years ago, had exactly the same issue. I'll go back and check that just to be sure. That's something, I'll, I'll put that up in one of my list of 100s. Something simple, see, little, little simple things like that. You'd never, you're like, huh, oh, it's never had it. Yeah, why isn't it there? Can Cavendish get to 34 or 35? The absolute dream for Cav would be to take the next two and then win on the Champs Lycee to take over the record. That would be a fairy tale. Fairy tales rarely happen. Look, Cav to take two um, would be, that's fine. I, that's huge. Cav to take one. Um, but I'd love to see Cav win the green and then hang the bike up as the champion. That would be, that would be, I don't want to see Cav do the downhill slide again over the next few years, but there's money involved. He's got a family. I get it. If I could accept only like one and a half mil per year, I'm sure I could accept that. I'm sure his pay rate would go up next year, but you, you, I mean, there's, there's always new people coming along. Uh, flux, yeah. One for tax support or Garmin support now. Uh, the, specifically, the guys at tax knew all the sounds of their trainer. So if you could take a video of your trainer and send it through, they could diagnose almost anything. Uh, the flux, if it sounds like a screaming cat, yeah, you probably want to replace it. As for noising though, noisy. I won't recommend any belt lubrication or dry lube on the belt. I won't recommend that. But if you happen to trip over and spray someone there and see how it goes. It'll usually quieten down when it warms up though. Trains get hot. Trains get very, very, very hot. Uh, if you don't believe me, come and put your hand on the kicker flywheel right now. Your hand won't stay there for too long. That could be a good test, actually. That'd be a YouTube video. Can, can I cook an egg on a trainer? Not while it's moving. That'd get messy. <laughs> Too late for the, the belt loop. Okay, it's probably heat related then. Might even be a worn belt. If you can take a video of it in the sound and just explain to them how you can repeat the issue too. That's usually a good one. Working on help desks years and years and years ago, if somebody can say, Here's my problem. Here's what I've tried to do so far to, to resolve it. Usually they screw things up even worse. And, uh, but if how, how you can replicate it, what are the steps you take to replicate the issue? That's always ones that help desks absolutely love because if it's a true issue and they can replicate it themselves in the lab, and this is across the board for any, any tech stuff. 
Ah, oh, Sean, you missed out, mate. I told an awesome story about C++ redistributables being uninstalled and reinstalling the 2017 through 2019 redistributable upgrade pack and fixing all my Bluetooth issues on Zwift. I should have told it like that in the first place, shouldn't I? It would have wouldn't have taken eight minutes. <laughs> oh, and the Llama Lab test. And a sprint. What else did we miss? I think you're up to speed, mate. <laughs> Whew. Gravel tires on a mag trainer. That's gonna be noisy. You can get, if you've got a dedicated rear wheel, <clears throat> you can get slick trainer tires in almost any size. I think I've got a 29er trainer tire. That'd be fun outside. I forgot this direction's uphill. We'll turn left up here and go down the hill. <coughs> this video will be on live stream replay. You can go back and watch it again. But if anybody did, does want to actually see the details about this fix for my Bluetooth issues, so that seems to be working well so far. Jump on Facebook. Zwift PC Master Race Group. I think they call themselves. There's a few threads in there that are really helpful. It's down the rabbit hole, yes. But, uh, but there's nothing worse than jumping on, wanting to do a workout and not being able to pair things. And not having sensors picked up. It can be so frustrating. And that's pretty much why the channel started. Trying to de demystify and explain things. As I was figuring them out, I'm not the expert. I just, I tinker with this stuff a lot and encounter issues like you wouldn't believe. I try not to make videos out of the stuff that doesn't work. I ditched two videos the other day. Um, hot tip, Favero Astiomas don't work with Xpedo Thrust 8 pedal bodies, which cost $190. Second hot tip, if anybody wants a pair of Thrust Xpedo non-power pedals that, that are unused, that come with two sets of cleats, let me know. 45 minutes I spent filming that from the downhill, downhead shot, trying to get it working. The spindles were a little bit too long, so I couldn't swap the bearings over and have the, uh, anyway. It didn't work, no video, just more knowledge and less cash. <laughs> Things that don't work, yeah. <laughs> Watch most of my power meter videos. <laughs> Typically they come out as, Here's the, the, this doesn't work. <laughs> this is why it doesn't work. Um, speaking of power music, it didn't quite work, but we're very close. Uh, Sugi, -E, Suji, I think it's Sigi Axo meter. I had those for about a year, testing, 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 and I couldn't pinpoint, like, yes, that works, that's cool. They, they kept changing the firmware and it just kept doing different things. I just wasn't confident with the unit. And they asked for all of them back. They got them back. That was a few months back. I've reached out again to them saying, hey, you got about 20 or 30 data sets from me. Can I have another power meter to possibly review? Because that's kind of how I get paid by putting videos up and people watching them. I mean, I don't want to put a slave video out there saying, well, this was shit for the last 12 months, but I don't know what they're like now. So I've reached out to those guys to see if I can, they can send over another meter. Oh, super duck. I am interested in the cheap power meters out of Asia, out of China. Um, they can put a lot of pressure on the more established brands, I guess. Uh, Price-wise, I don't know what prices are across. I don't keep track of what sells for what. I'm sorry, but for the 500 pounds, what does a kicker core go for? I'm guessing it's mid-range, 500 pounds. I'm um, looking at the core, the Suto T, which should be a little cheaper. The T means just doesn't come with a cassette. It's the same as the Suto. Um, what else? Still not a fan of the Flux. The Kicker Core though has lasted the test of time. The stickers on the Kicker Core haven't. They usually fly off pretty quick. But the core itself, <laughs> mid-range, yeah. Look, the Jet Black Vault also surprised me. Had some drift issues. 
think I've seen the Jiplak vault pop up on Ray's Instagram recently. I need to see what tax slash Garmin do. Maybe this year. It's been a while. What, the two T's now? What, two years old? More? Two and a half years, maybe. I'm not sure we'll see much new. I think all trainers... Oh, good. Good to hear, Ray. That was surprising. Given the history of jet black trainers that I've had, um, Whisper Drive wasn't all that brilliant. But the vault, and, and that trick with the vault, how it pairs your heart rate and then channels that back through the single blue. Brilliant, brilliant. It's a smart, smart trainer. I don't think they can do much more with trainers though. I think uh, they've all converged into the one feature set, plus or minus one to 2% through axle support, quick release support, um, quiet, Bluetooth and Ant Plus, cadence, as well as power. They've all become the same trainer. They really have. Ah, oh, final review out later this week. Good stuff. Um, so where could trainers go? I think if Shimano 12 speed comes out, anytime this side of 2045, then we're gonna have trouble with standards of free hubs on trainers. At the moment, I'm both Shimano and SRAM, so I've gotta find out an XD driver hub. If Shimano come out with say micro spline for the 12 speed road, or a different version of Hyperglide, and then there's Campagnolo as well, hubs are going to be an issue. Through axle used to be a problem for a lot of trainers, and then you had to buy a third party, or not third party, an, an aftermarket adapter. What I'd like to see with trainers is, I'm pretty happy with where they are. Well, there's a lot of people there. Let's get some right eyes. Oh, is that the, that's Coco. And that's the people off the front of the Coco. But is Coco going through the, let's, let's go Coco. Ellie Mac, there we go. There's a familiar face. Or butt. I saw your butt, mate. Oh, shit. Bye. Bye, Coco Bunch. Oh. Back on the trainers. What I'd like to see is when you buy a trainer, the cassette or free hub doesn't come in the box. You get to choose as part of the service offering. Oh, you want the kicker core or the kicker five? Six, eight, whatever. Cool, okay, so you buy the trainer and in a separate part of the box is a little compartment where off the shelf you just go, oh, I need SRAM 12 speed. I need Shimano 12 speed. And then that goes with the trainer. One size doesn't fit all anymore. That's the next frontier for trainers, I think. They're quiet, they're accurate enough. We've seen Wahoo address the dropout issue with the Kicker Direct Connect. And we've seen that be ignored by Zwift, unfortunately, to date. Why isn't it FutureWorks? Zwift have a beta stream. It's called FutureWorks. We're riding with one right now. There's no reason why Zwift can't do Kicker Direct Connect support and call it FutureWorks. I'd even happily be prompted every freaking time I finish a FutureWorks ride with a survey. That's another thing on my list of 100 things Zwift should fix. Give me the survey five times. Once I've ridden with Coco more than five times, it's the same fucking experience. Don't ask me again. Uh, I'll be on the TDF in a sec. So has anybody else got any other thoughts where trainers could go? I think they've all... Wi-Fi is the next. <laughs> Gee, that was far more interesting. No, no, no. Okay, why do I think that's happening with Direct Connect? I think, and I have no seat again at this table, I think Zwift are developing their own set of protocols and their own standards. They want to license themselves. I think YC, in the last Zwiftcast interview, alluded to that, which is fine. 
but it doesn't mean they can't dip their toes in the water and support what the fuck's already on the market and been developed pretty much for Zwift anyway. I'm... Things should be Wi-Fi. Simple as that. I've got a Google... I've got a Google Nest on this desk right here to make this desk a smart desk. It's Wi-Fi. This head unit's Wi-Fi. My smart trainer is not. So I think that's what's happening with um, direct. I think they're just circling the wagons and not supporting it, which sucks. <clears throat> but what's the date today? It's the 6th. Okay, so we've got another week or so until we put out the next update. It could even drop in that. Uh, which way is the pace partner going? This way, cool. <sighs> road feels a bit of a... Road feels fun, but only when it's implemented correctly. You turn road feel on and go ride Richmond, it's not fun. Uh, road feel the kicker bike also comes down to any potential patents they might have on it. If any patent searcher wants to go searching tax or it could be cool if they gamified it. Imagine being able to throw someone some ice. Or if you're off the back, like to drop you out of the bunch. Like, do you laps of a velodrome? Is it the, the devil gets the hindmost? I think they called it in the UK. Those kind of rides. And then Zwift could send that the ice command to the trainer, which just slips you out and you can't produce watts. Sweet. Gamify it. What is erg mode actually good for? Erg mode, I've gone around that circle a few times of hating erg, accepting erg, loving erg, hating erg again. It's just simply a way to put a whip on a horse and hit go. Whack, 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 whack. I'm not against, sorry. Don't step in shit shame by saying about animal cruelty. You know how they whip horses to go fast? That, it's what it does to you. It makes you do the watts. And some people need that. As for using erg though for say time trial pacing, no, that's a bad thing. In a time trial, you need to subconsciously generate that power yourself. I'm okay with erg. Though it is a little artificial. The only time I can think of where erg actually exists outdoors is when you're chasing someone's wheel up a hill and they are setting the pace and you're holding the wheel. That's pretty much it. See what I mean about the thumbs? That's why I turn them off. Workout plans on Zwift any good? I think they're very generic. Um, that's not any, a criticism. I think most people just need structure. If you go from unstructured training or riding to structured, you'll see an improvement. I think 90% of workouts just give people something to do in the ballpark zone they should be doing it. But everybody is different. Everybody responds differently. If you took a massive sample of people doing five by fives, they'll all respond a little differently. And that's not due to what they do on the bike, it's a lot to do with what they do off the bike. If you're a tradie, or if you're on your feet all day, you're probably not going to get the same benefit as someone who sits at a desk. And that's exactly the same training plan. So it really depends. That's where the AI stuff really stick, can step in and your historical data. So my response to 5x5s over the years would probably be very similar. I know it works, that's why I'm doing it. It would be nice though for the system to say, hey, five years ago you got to this level by doing these kind of workouts and at this volume. And for some number crunching to happen on my historical data, 
to spit out the training plan that will get me there. That would be really cool. And that's where training is going. There's no question about that. Trainer road uh, down that path already. I think exert are already there. I can't figure that out. I do respect what they're doing though. There we go, trainer road. Hey! All right, what's the time? 9.36. It's getting late. The two is on. Has the brake formed yet? I saw Eric Min using Zert quite a lot. So I was wondering, you know, is that going to be a, a collab there coming in? But I think that would be the opposites, which is fine if they implement it correctly. But you go from Zwift, which is a pointy clicky, very basic interface, to something that's super complex. Ben O'Connor, yeah. Very quick kid. I'm not sure he'll last on the podium. Doesn't matter, he's got a stage win. And for every, every single room he walks into and is introduced now for the rest of his life, it will be to the front stage winner, Ben O'Connor. At the minimum. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. Good on him. Western Australia has a massive time trial scene and that goes a long way to building good engines and good riders. Luke Durbridge, Travis Meyer, Cam Meyer. Who else? Michael Freeberg. Who else? Robert Power? Was it Rob Power? Are you sure? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm on the women's side of things. Her name escapes me. Oh, I forget. This was Green Edge. Vanderplug was Vanderplug Perth? Vanderplug was. I thought he was um, Aubrey. That guy's a big unit. That guy's a big unit. What did he win? It was. Uh, it was. It wasn't cyclic. It wasn't mountain bike. It was some sort of discipline of mountain bike where you elbow people. <laughs> what was that again? That was. Oh, we're escaping from cadence. I can't think. I've got, now I've got to go look it up. What he, what he won the world champs in. Nineteen eighty nine. I was only a baby. Cyclocross champ. Is it cross country eliminator? That's the one. Eliminator. <laughs> Just the name of eliminator sounds hardcore. Hey, Mark. Marco, yes, your, old, your dad, uh, I remember, he was at the top of uh, Titans Grove. He rode off on me. He dropped me. I pulled over to recalibrate some power meters, but he still dropped me. job done so I'll call it a day shortly but this Bluetooth test has worked very very well again at the start of the video I discussed what I'd done um, all going off the next few days I'll submit that feedback to Zwift about what I've done to resolve the issue that's raised uh, yeah hopefully that's gonna help help a lot of other people if it solved my Bluetooth problem so all's looking good Training for the Masters National TT in Ireland. Any tips? Break the course down into one kilometer segments and train for those. Replicate the course. You don't need to rewrite the course on a smart trainer. You just break the course down 
into the demands of the course. If it's a hill at the start, you're going to go hard. If it's downhill at the start, you're going to go easy. Break it down. We broke the Tour of Bright time trial down into, I think, 200 meter sections. I rewrote that so many times at home. Come race day, there's no nerves. You've ridden the course a million times. You know exactly what to do. You know the zones you're going to hit. You'll have it absolutely nailed. The Tour of Bright TT, after riding it 30 or 40 times, I think, I don't know, it was a lot. I took off with a massive smile. I hit the finish line about two seconds faster than what I predicted. Over 13 and a half Ks. <clears throat> so, be familiar with the process and, and the effort that you're going to go through. That's it. Also, know how to bike, handle your bike. If it's windy, choose the right front wheel. Always a disc, always a disc. In a hurricane, in a cyclone, in goddamn outer space, use a disc. Actually, in space, you probably wouldn't need a disc. Front wheel is important. Um, that's it. So in the, the headspace side of things, just if you know the course, if you've ridden the course, and there's no guesswork of, oh, what's coming up? How much have I got left in the tank? You'll know it, you'll nail it. If you do it right, that last couple of Ks, you're just like, hell yeah, open the throttle and go. And you're familiar with the pain and the focus that you'll need. TTs are awesome fun. You're in full control of everything. Everything. Road races, on the other hand, you can be the smartest guy, you can be the fastest guy or girl, and you can be out the back. Mr. Crosswind, Mr. Break. You will never miss a breakaway in a time trial. You're always off the front. TTs are fun. Oh, God, I love TTs. Right is very flat. Which course are you talking about? Both TT courses at Bright were hilly. Wandy had an absolute bowl belter in the first two and a half Ks and then was rolling. And the tip course again punched you in the nether regions at about seven and a half Ks in through to about 9.5. I can still break the course down off the top of my head. It's really cool to be able to break a course down and know it. And Wandy did require a stop at the pub. <laughs> that was so fun. Flying past that pub with full kit, full gear, helmet, like the whole works. And there was people sitting out the front there and you'd rip through there. I mean, if you look at the KOM for that, I think it's 47 out, 47 back or something. So much fun. A few really hot days we've done there, two in the time. I'll go through to 50 Ks too. Easy to tick up the Ks with these, this crew. I dropped the chain on the first climb on one of the TTs there too. It's definitely a big ring to small ring climb. And I was like, uh oh, here we go. Finger down, straight back on. I'm like, oh, there's a get out of jail free. I only lost a few seconds. Coming home though, over the bridge, last 300 meters, probably 400 meters to go on that course. There's a bit of a pothole or a divot. And of all the test rides we did, it's like, okay, dodge the hole, dodge the hole, dodge the hole. Come race day, straight through the center. Boom, TT bars went, foof. Like, had to get on the bullhorns and ride the rest of that. TTs are fun. They are very fun. Again, that's why Perth and WA, such a strong scene. So many time trials over there to do. And the best part about the ATTA or ATTA Time Trial Association is that you'll rock up, you'll get a start time. You'll, you'll do your ride, and that's it. There's no podiums, there's no prizes. You get a result on the result sheet, and that's it. So no winners, no losers. Your goal is to go back next time and do a better time, or to pace better the next time. It's, yeah, fantastic. 
I'm sure if you went through some of the ATTA times for something like Champion Lakes, you'll see Ben O'Connor's name pick up a few times. I'm pretty sure he's put a bit of time into me over there. Champion Lakes ATTA, results index. There we go. When was I over there? I was over there in 2017. They still have results back that far. All years, here we go. Oh, then we got, only got back to 2018. Previous seasons, okay, results. Oh, that works. Previous years link, yeah, here we go. This is, oh, Champion Lakes. Was it 15? I was over there. Seven? I think it might have been 17. Oh, wow. So, if you want to snoop any of the uh, Western Australian time trial scene results, they're all still up there. That's cool. I'll dig through those later on. I think I set my 20 minute power PB around Champion Lakes. It was on the road bike because I didn't have my TT bike over there at the time. I think I was 385 for 20 minutes. That was a good day. I could always put out more power, obviously, on the road bike with a bit more relaxed position, but you didn't necessarily go faster. TT bars on the gravel? No. No, no, no. Uh, Coco's, I'm dropping off the back now. Coco's speed will, will change. Um, Coco rides at a consistent watts per kilo or a consistent wattage. It's a bot. It's, an, it's probably just an ant simulator bot. Um, but what that means is going up a hill, the pace spot will be slower. Down a hill, it'd be crazy fast. Uh, but that's it. 12 to 10. Time to watch the tour. Thanks everybody for coming along for that one. That was another good hour and a half of Bluetooth data that all looks really good. Again, collecting data from three different power meters over Ant Plus. I'll look at that later on. Um, that's with the Kicker 5 latest firmware with FTMS. Uh, the rival axis power meter, and one we cannot speak of just quite yet. Not quite yet. Coco is so transparent. Dude, dad jokes. Dad jokes. <laughs> Bring it on. I've got to go to 51 case. I can't stop here and not get that extra K. Um, Mama lab test went well. No data dropouts. That was all pretty good. Data looked good, uh, as expected, with two of the known power meters. The unknown was still a little different, so we'll d dive into that and find out what's going on whether that was just for the ERG intervals or whether that was overall. Um, that's about it. Stay tuned. Always stuff in the background happening. Tons of stuff being filmed behind me, all as part of uh, other videos and things, but it's been pretty quiet lately. Not a lot of releases from companies. Um, I kind of sit around all day waiting for Strava to do an update or a new Garmin firmware to come out. <laughs> uh, there should be something out for the Bolt soon and for the Element units. I've seen the beta stream be quite noisy on that. So uh, once those things pop to mainstream, or production, I'll cover those. But for now, it's time to go and watch Cav hopefully thread the needle and uh, take another win. If Cav can get three, that'd be pretty cool. Anyhow, everybody, thanks for coming along for this one. Uh, and that's been quite successful. Again, looping back to the Bluetooth thing I talk about at the start in the middle of the video, I will cover that in another video as a separate video if it continues to work for me. It's been a game changer installing those redistributables and cleaning the system out, which was a pretty clean system anyway. But if it makes Zwift work better, and we can help out other people. That's what we're all about. Again, we'll leave it there. I'll go get rid of these thumbs for the next live stream so it doesn't annoy everybody. And uh, enjoy the tour. See you soon.